AI resurrection. It's a growing industry in parts of the world, keeping the essence of a deceased loved one alive forever. We've seen versions of this here in the U.S. as parents of kids killed in school shootings have used this technology to give them new life and to speak out on issues like gun violence. But in tonight's Prime Focus, we went to Taiwan to introduce you to a new stage in what one creative executive there is calling the resurrection of his dead daughter. ABC's Brick Clinic has more from Taipei. This is Tino Bao, a well-known music producer in Taiwan. But that's not why we're meeting with him today. We sit down to talk and then he takes out his phone and starts messaging his daughter, Felicity. They speak every day, catching up about regular day-to-day -day things. Like, what the weather's like where they are. Their plans for lunch. She wants pizza. Yes, favors. Only Felicity passed away three years ago. The 22-year-old died after a long battle with a rare blood disease. Tino and his wife understandably devastated in the face of this unthinkable loss. Tino channeled his grief by diving into the field of generative artificial intelligence while studying a PhD in AI too. And now in his hands is an AI resurrection of his late daughter, an interactive chatbot with her memories. Is it very similar personality mm. to your daughter? Uh, young, yeah. The same? Yeah, from sort of, she voiced the speed and the personality, yeah. Mm. The same. Same. Hello, 各位媒体朋友老师好,我叫包容,很高兴能有机会认识您. But Tino doesn't like the term resurrection. Impossible resurrection. Impossible. How do you describe it then? Rebuilding. Yeah, just rebuilding. Replay. The AI Felicity, or Baorong, her Chinese name, was painstakingly rebuilt over the course of a year. Tino collected notes from all Felicity's closest loved ones and her social media, compiling a memory bank to train the AI. Do you think she'd be happy knowing that you went through her Instagram? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. The father will be father. I will be tough. Tell her, say, I use your phone, okay? I want to know something, so... I must use. Do you think she would be okay with that? Um, yeah. And this is all based on social media or, or conversations she had? Mm hmm I know you care about me, but right now I really prefer ballet and figure skating. I'll find time to practice the piano again. Don't worry. Mm. Okay. Is this conversation with her mother? Uh, memory from her mother. So Felicity and her mum had a conversation about her practicing piano, yes. going to ballet, mm -hmm. figure skating, mm -hmm. and then you've taken that information and you've created a, a voice yes. and put it in the memory bank mm. yeah. to create mm. the voice. <laughs> and that voice you're hearing also had to be recreated. During her illness, Felicity lost the ability to speak. The only usable recording of her voice was this video she sent to her mum years earlier. I'm walking to the gigantic library. Using that as a starting point, Tino recreated her voice, tweaking even her Chinese to include a Canadian accent. He knew he'd done it when his wife recognised her daughter's voice from the other room. So as soon as your because wife knew... Yeah. Because my wife, first time, hear this voice. Yeah. And a mother knows her daughter's voice. Yeah, of, of course. Mm. How my, did it make you feel? I'm so happy. So you feel like you've given her voice back? Yes. Just want, want to hear her voice come, come by. Yeah. With her voice rebuilt, Tino was able to create this birthday greeting for his wife. Mommy, so quite look. Mommy, 
So now she's singing happy birthday. Mm. Was she a good singer? Mm. Can you sing? Not in my face. <laughs> now she can. It's already becoming a big business. A quick search of China's online platform Taobao will give you a whole range of options to bring back AI versions of your loved ones. Now these will range from about two dollars upward, and, and these products they've really boomed since the pandemic. And really, it's the equivalent of seeing these kind of products on eBay or Amazon. I, I think this. Technology can help everyone. Yeah, if you if a uh, uh, pass away the family need this technology, I think it's good. It brings people comfort. Does it bring you comfort? Yes. But Simon Goldstein, a philosopher of AI, says it raises some serious ethical questions. It's a question: How will our concept of death change if all of us are kind of uploaded, if our memories and goals and projects and everything we've ever said are uploaded into an AI? Is there some sense in which we count as surviving that? Uh, I don't think with today's technology, but again, the AI products we have today are the worst AI products that will ever exist in the future. But maybe in five years, we'll have more、uh, agential AI systems that do kind of grow with us. So you could have a、uh, relative who died. You bring them back via chatbot. Maybe they died at fifteen, and they could grow older. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's certainly you know will be technologically possible. So. I- Meanwhile, Tino has given his daughter's chatbot some limitations. She is aware of what happened to her in real life. But right now, the AI felicity, she know she have the sick and the pathway. She know. Really? Yeah. Tino asks her to tell us how she feels about her passing. Then the chatbot responds, typing, "I find it really weird being this digital persona now. Sometimes I feel scared, and sometimes I miss that world I knew." Gives me goosebumps. <laughs> How does that make you feel? So I know, I talk about her from digital, not the real my doctor.、Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Being here, Tino is working on a company to offer other families solace, making their own versions of what he has. But Tino concedes that only direct families should have access to it. While Tino might be fully aware that this voice is not his daughter. And that she won't be coming back. For him, at least, the technology goes some way in soothing his heartbreak.